Australia Regional Educational Faculty and the BHA Education Faculty. He's had, had a position with, uh, as the chair of the Australasian Guild of Barbershop Judges. He's been vice president music. He's been vice president contest and judging. He's just about done it all. In 2013, Alex became the first non-North American certified barbershop harmony society music judge. He's a really sought after arranger. Uh, he's regularly commissioned to write new works and arrangements and sells his music to ensembles all over the world. It gives me great pleasure to introduce tonight's se session our special presenter, Mr. Alex Morris. Thank you so much, Dan. Well, it's my absolute pleasure to be here. I'd firstly like to start by acknowledging that tonight I'm presenting this class on the traditional lands of the Wandering people of the Kulin Nation and pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. I acknowledge that sovereignty was never ceded and this always was and always will be Aboriginal land. I am so excited to be presenting this class uh, for BHA tonight. When I was asked um, to be part of this Friday night series, I said yes straight away because I think it's so vital that we do stay in touch with each other, even though we are socially distant. Um, and what better way to kick this off than talk a little bit about what we can be doing from home while we are socially distant. Um, so I've called this Keep the Fire Burning, tips for rehearsing from home, and I'm really hoping that you get the reference. Yes, Keep the Fire Burning is one of my all time favorite disco songs. And obviously tips from, for rehearsing at home is a wonderful working from home pun. Are we sick of them yet? I think we might be. I decided for the, this webinar, the best way to prepare for this session was to talk to some of my res respected colleagues from all around the world and get their insight on what they might be doing or what they might offer as suggestions for ways that we can keep on top of our singing, even though we are in isolation. I asked each of them for their one hot tip, and some of them gave so, so many, and I had to cut it down, with these people giving so much of their time and their knowledge to me when I asked. Um, for most of these, I've extrapolated out and listed a whole lot of stuff that I think um, is valuable for us to be doing while we're at home based on their hot tip for what we can be doing to perfect our singing goals while we are at home and in isolation. So let's kick it off with our very first expert. Whoop, my apologies. That's right, it's Oprah Winfrey. I must admit there are three people I didn't ask personally for their advice today, uh, but there are three people that I took a really good quote from that I thought was valuable to us in our lessons in terms of what we can be doing at home. Um, the rest of these people I did actually contact and they were very, very happy to provide their feedback to me when I got in touch. So this one's important. You can have it all, just not all at once. Uh, I think it's important to remember that sometimes uh, things do take time and we have to be patient. Um, we have to play the long game, especially when we're in isolation. We have to take those small little victories we have, whether it be a great Zoom rehearsal or the fact that we sang a song in tune or the fact that we sang a song with a member of our family at home. Take those small victories as they come and celebrate these things as much as possible. The second guest that I asked a question of was Beck Hewitt an amazing vocal educator and, in my mind, a bit of a quartet icon in the Sweet Adeline world. Her advice was, sing every day. It can be hard to stay motivated while in isolation, but not only does singing every day help to maintain our mechanism in use and tone, but singing releases endorphins, helping us to feel happier in these quite stranger times. So we could sing every day. What could we do to sing every day? We could sing in the shower. I think there's a lot of us that already do that already. We could sing along with the radio or our iPod or whatever music device you choose to use. We could sing with our loved ones. Some of them are blessed to have kids who can sing so beautifully in tune. Some of us are even blessed to have a whole quartet within the family. We could sing to our pets as much as they may look at us with strange looks. We could sing to flowers, although people may question whether isolation is treating you as best as it could. Um, but you could also work on a more uh, technical level and sing a scale every day to try and slowly expand your range, starting in a place that feels comfortable and moving either way around that scale. We could sing our repertoire songs from our chorus or quartet, and we could even give a shot at singing those in a different part. Some of us have done that before and some of us have realized that baritones truly are God's chosen people and tenors are the cream of the crop, if I do say so myself as a tenor. We could also learn to sing different number patterns. 
Now, in talking with other directors around the country, they've been getting their chorus to learn sight singing via singing different number patterns. Now, they started with postcodes, which for me is 3066, and then they moved on to date of birth, which for me would be 1707 1987. So if you can imagine how that might sound, it might sound a little bit like something that was released in the modernist era of classical composition, but it's a really fun way that you might be able to start to teach yourself sight singing without even realizing it. So write down your postcode, play it on a piano, and work out the numbers based on where you are in your postcode, your date of birth, and if you really wanted to, even your phone number, and then maybe start with the Fibonacci series or Pi. Either way, there are great ways that you can teach yourself sight singing without even trying. The next person I spoke to was Naomi Krellen. She is an Australian a cappella royalty and has been a member of the Idea of North since the very beginning. She's a very well respected colleague of mine and actually sat on the panel the very first time I judged the BHA contest in Queensland back in 2000, 2010 that would have been. She said, sing for the sheer pleasure of it, literally like no one is listening. And for a lot of us, we're home alone a lot or we're in the shower a lot. Take advantage of using this time to explore all the weird and wonderful sounds of our voices can make when we're not limited to fear of judgment of people around us. Simply enjoy, she said to me. So singing for the pleasure of it could take on many forms. My advice is that it's never a bad time to burst into song, no matter who you're around, especially if you've got a backing track to support you. But sing whenever you want and just sing for the pleasure of it. But it is, as Naomi said, a great time to start to explore your voice in a way you maybe haven't before. It's a perfect time to make some weird noises and explore those different sounds that we might not want to make in public. We could explore range. For many of us, this could be a great time to start to maybe extend our range by, as I said, as I said earlier, moving through a scale and slowly going a little bit higher and a little bit lower each day. But it's also a time for us to explore tone color. Um, now, tone color can take on many different forms, and tone color could describe maybe an accent or a certain voice that we're trying to replicate, but this is a great time to lock yourself in a room and see what weird and wonderful things your voice might do. It's also a great time to explore resonance, and let's face it, the most resonant place we can sing is probably our bathroom, so find a funny spot and see the kind of noises your voice can make. My recommendations are definitely a stairwell if you've got one in your building. An elevator, however, not necessarily the best place to do this. It could also be a good time for you to start exploring whether or not you can sing with vibrato and how that works. Jump on YouTube as there are many excellent ways that you can research how to play with your vibrato, but also note there's a huge amount of vocal educators who are currently still teaching online that might be able to help you play with your vibrato, whether it be natural or something you need to learn. Finally, singing make you happier. It's actually science. It's true. It is proven that singing releases endorphins into our body and singing with other people not only releases more endorphins, but gives us that feeling of closeness. Now, unfortunately, obviously at the moment, depending on what state you're in, the amount of people you can have in one place might be quite small. And if you have to stand two meters apart while singing, well, it's good ear training, but it's not necessarily as satisfying as it might be when we're standing on the rises. But it still will release those endorphins. So simply just sing for the pleasure of it and enjoy whatever sound comes out of your mouth. The next person I spoke to was Dan Milgate, current BHA president, who gave me a wonderful introduction, I might add, and quartet extraordinaire. He's been around for about 300 years and enjoyed barbershop royalty that whole time. That gorgeous, beautiful red beard of his has never looked better. And it's my pleasure to be on screen with him right now. I always looked up to Dan when I was a young barber shopper and it was a real treat for me to get to ask him this question today. He said to always record yourself in order to learn and improve. He thinks that recording is the number one tool we can use as singers. We all have some kind of instant recording device in our phones these days, whether it be um, a tablet or a phone or even your computer, you can use the different recording devices. So there's no real excuse for not doing this. The trick is having someone to talk you through exactly what to listen for when you listen back to yourself. And that's an important thing to find. There's someone who could be your confidant to let you know what you might be listening for. So if you are to record yourself, what kind of things would you wanting to be listening for? When you do make a recording, singing, listen back and note some of the following things. What do you love about what you're hearing when you listen to your recording? What makes you smile and happy when you listen to your voice back? And that's a really important one, because I think for a lot of us, we do tend to focus 
straight away on the things we might want to change or improve. I think it's just part and parcel of being a human being and definitely part and parcel of being a barbershopper or a performer is we are always wanting to do better. But it's really important to recognize what we love about the sound that we create. Also note, what's your greatest strength? We all have strengths in our voice, no matter how small or large they are. And it's important that we do note those straight away and know what we love about the sound we're making. Next, you might want to look in a little bit more detail. What do you notice about the tone or the quality of your voice when you're singing? What do you notice about the tone or quality of your voice when you move through different parts of your range? Or maybe on vowel sounds that feel a little bit funny. What do you notice about the pitch or intonation of your voice? Now this might be a little hard for some of us to hear without some kind of reference. You could either use a reference like a pitch pipe to play during a song, or you might want to use a learning track that has your part removed so you can sing along with the other parts and check yourself against the other parts. What do you notice about phrasing and flow? What do you notice about when you reach the peak of a phrase and come down the other side? Do you know that your dynamics kind of match that? Do you know that your voice travels delicately up to the top? and then rolls down the other side. What do you note about your breath and your breath control? Is your breath audible when you're singing? If it is, it might mean that you're taking breath not as good as we could. And if you're not making it to the end of the phrase, think to yourself, what might be the reasons that are causing me not to make it to the end of each phrase? Next, you might wanna ask yourself, what might be my greatest area for improvement? It's always good to make achievable and manageable goals. So rather than going, I want to fix everything, think about one thing that you might be able to be aware of, to have a look at, to work on. And the final thing, who might you ask for help in that area? Who might you be able to contact, whether that be a fellow singer, a professional, your director, someone you might know that might be able to give you some help in that particular area for improvement. The next person I asked is a very good friend of mine, Jackie Dark someone I regard as one of the most amazing singers that this country has on offer. She's won Helpman Awards, Green Room Awards. She's an incredible mezzo-soprano and she works a lot with Opera Australia, but also with most major opera companies around the country. I had the pleasure of recently working on a show with her that was written by Paul Mack in January and it was such a joy working not only with this voice, but this human being. Her advice was hum like crazy around the house. It's the best and safest vocal exercise you can do and keeps your voice literally humming along. Just sing. It's good for everything at the moment. Oh, do I need to look at the Q&A? Thanks, Dan. <laughs> uh, Richard Rebus, when singing scales to expand range, what should the goal be? Number of tones? Just keep doing the scale and see how much range increases, if at all. That's a good question. I would say that the best idea for you would be to pick a pitch and go from there. Moving up in uh, the diatonic scale is probably your best bet, which is a scale that we all understand as one through eight. However, if you do want to look at semitones, you may want to play along with a keyboard or use some kind of recording on the internet. I would say that you always want to go to a point that feels comfortable, but maybe a point just beyond that. But the moment that it does feel uncomfortable is probably a little bit too far. But definitely, I think that moving in tones is probably the easiest thing if you're moving in scales. However, if you are comfortable in moving in the chromatic scales or by semitones, that might be something that you can do. Alex, we had one more question here just from a, a participant who's not sure that they understand the number singing thing. Are you able to demonstrate that quickly? Sure, I really should have practiced one. So as I said before, my postcode is 033066. So if this is one, two, three, four, five, six, I could go one, two, three, zero is obviously nothing. Six, six. Say my postcode was one, two, five, three. One, two, five, three. Uh, say my date of birth was the 13th of the 11th, 1993. Let me see if I can do this. One, three, what did I say, 11? One, 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 nine, nine, three. <laughs> that was harder than I thought. But it is a fun way of exploring sightseeing, remembering that Do is one. And if you're looking at a piano, the best place might be to look is C, which is the one just below the two black keys. 
hopefully that answers your question. Thank you so much, Alex. And just a reminder to everybody who is participating in the webinar, down the bottom of your screen, you'll see a little function that says Q&A. If you've got any questions that you'd like to pop in there for Alex to answer during the session, we've got some time set aside at the end uh, to answer all of those questions you've got. So that's through the Q&A function down the bottom of your Zoom webinar. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, Dan. So Jackie Fittish was saying, just think, it's good for everything at the moment, which is exactly what Beck and Naomi were saying. So if we are humming, what could we be doing? Well, you can literally hum along with anything. Uh, your presenter tonight is a pretty big harmony nerd, if you didn't know already, and has attempted all of the things you can currently see on your screen. I once discovered that my microwave had two settings while it was in motion, and if I sang the right pitch, we created a perfect cadence. That's called five to one. Another time I heard an ambulance passing my house and discovered that if I sang the right pitch, we created a plagal cadence, which is called four to one. Yes, I know, it's strange, but you know, we all spend our free time doing different things. We could also sing along with bird song. We're pretty blessed in Australia to have so many birds that make a stunning array of sounds. So why not tap into your inner ornithologist and sing along with a bird outside your house? Someone's just said, I don't understand the number singing thing. Hopefully that my answer, I just said, answered your question. Cool, excellent. Finally, you could hum along with music you listen to it. Let's face it, we're all pretty good at remembering notes, well at least me, but I'm pretty terrible at remembering lyrics. So half the time I do sing, my body. So you could sing along and hum along with music. Now the best way to make a really good hum is to ensure that we have some space between the back teeth and that our lips are just touching. We shouldn't have a clenched jaw and there should be no tension. Just like with any singing we do, there should be no tension we're singing. So make sure that when you are humming, there's space between the back molars and that there's a nice light touch between your lips so that you can buzz. If you're humming just for the sake of it, maybe just start where it feels comfortable and slowly extend your range from the middle. I always like to start in a comfortable place and start to move up first and then down once my voice is feeling warm. Humming could also potentially be complemented with a n sound or a n sound or a v sound or j, which sounds like this. So that's n, n, v or z. Could be sounds that you could use instead of a hum, just to give yourself a bit of variety. You could hum while you wait for the kettle to boil. You could hum while you wait for your toast to pop. You could hum while you're waiting for the bus, although people might think that you're humming like crazy. Or you could join one of the variety of sing-alongs that's happening online. Now, uh, there are plenty of great gigs that are happening um, that are put on by a variety of different music companies. There's also a lot of great individuals who are running events all over the place that could give you an opportunity to hum. I personally have been holding an awesome, I must say, karaoke night on a Tuesday night, and that's given people an opportunity to sing at home, but also an opportunity to make some noise in a well-produced way any night of the week. The next person I asked was Alex Morris. He's a really good dude and a very handsome person. <laughs> and he's humble, it looks like. He said to avail yourself of the wonders of technology, as the internet may be a scary place at times, but there are so many amazing resources available for free. Whether practicing an existing skill or learning a new skill, isolation is a fabulous time to spend working on you in any way. So what kind of technology could we use? Well, as Dan said, record yourself whenever you have the chance. You could record yourself and listen back to it. You could record yourself and send it to someone, or you could record yourself just to have that as a legacy on file. There are so many awesome programs and apps that are available these days for multi-tracking, either by yourself or with friends. The one that I've seen a lot of people use during isolation is the app Archipella. Now the app Archipella gives the opportunity to have up to nine voices or instruments recorded both in audio and video. And you can slice them all together and then basically present a virtual performance of whatever you're doing. Another app is Smule which is the world's leading karaoke app and allows you to record solos or duets with friends anywhere in the world. Their depository of amazing backing tracks is huge. So it is a fun way for you to play around with singing along either by yourself or with other people in a duet function. 
You may want to use programs like GarageBand, which comes for free on Macs, or Audacity, which is a free download off the internet. These softwares allow the opportunity to record your voice directly in and then have a play with things like reverb and volume and in some programs like Audacity, um, very basic pitch correction as well. You can use these softwares to create multi-tracks either by yourself or with other people or you can simply make a virtual performance like you've seen from many ensembles around the world as they've been filming virtual performances from their own home. Now, there are plenty of great resources on how to use Audacity or GarageBand on YouTube. However, I'm sure if you asked a friend who's got a computer and likes being on it, they may be able to give you some advice. Audacity is a great starting point. Although the software is a little older and clunkier, it is a great starting point for those who might want to have a play around with looking at what their voice looks like once it's recorded. You could potentially practice an existing skill using technology. There are so many cool apps yet again that I either both metronome and pitch or separately. Metronomes are great no matter what level of a musician you are. I worked for symphony orchestras for years and I can tell you that violinists who have been playing in orchestras since they were eight and are now 80 years old are still playing with metronomes. It's a really handy tool to work out an internal metronome and keeping in time. You may want to use pitch apps as well. Now there's some pretty cool apps uh, around. You could use pitch from the basic point of view of literally just playing a pitch and singing along with it, or maybe singing and checking your pitch as you go. There are also a number of really cool apps that allow you to sing directly into them and see the pictures that you're singing on the screen. They also give you an idea of whether you're right in the middle of the note or you're drifting above or below. So for those of us who really like to see the detail, that might be something fun for you. But for those of us who struggle with detail, I'd say that might be a little bit frustrating for some of us. You might want to learn a new skill. Sight singing is a great one that you can teach yourself at home. As I said, there are a huge amount of resources on YouTube and you can play around with the number game like I told you before. There's an app called Sight Singing, very original, which now has six different versions that will help to train and improve your sight reading skills through a huge repository of exercises that compare your pitch to the actual pitch that they're asking you to sing. Now these are for solo use, but also for ensemble use. And there's even a version where you can create your own exercises to play along with at home. I'd encourage you to download one of these and give it a shot. It's a really accurate way of immediately knowing whether or not we're singing in tune as we're singing. You might want to look at music theory. This is something again, that you can do by yourself. Obviously learning from an educator is a great way of doing it, but doing it by yourself is also an opportunity. The AMEB were very graciously, by the way, AMEB stands for Australian Music Examination Board. The AMEB were offering all of their courses in theory for free at the start of isolation. But unfortunately, they have now gone back up to their full price, which is still very affordable with each module being under $80. They run a really great theory program, starting at very basic beginner all the way through to advanced. However, there are some free resources online that you may want to look at. And one of them I'd like to show you right now is a wonderful website called musictheory.net. Now you may have seen this website before and I'm gonna put it on your screen right now, but it's an awesome site that is filled with a lot of amazing both lessons, exercises, and tools. So the lessons are quite fun. You can go in at a very simple level to learn about staff. You literally click play and a lesson will start. It's a, it's, a, it's a visual lesson taught by the notes at the bottom of the screen. They've got a series of classes in a whole lot of different options. The basics, rhythm and meter, scales and key signatures, intervals, chords, diatonic chords, chord progressions, and the list goes on. And they've got a bunch of great exercises, starting with note identification, for example. You can take a note on the stave and work out what it is. Now, if you're using the traditional methods, which are every good boy deserves fruit, you'd see that that one there is a D. You'll hear the pitch played, and then you've got a red if it's a no, or a green if it's correct. So if I look at this and think it's an A, when it's not, unfortunately that one's wrong. But if it is correct, you'll hear that B played. So there are so many amazing exercises and little tools in here for you to play with. So if you are wanting to learn a little bit more about basic music theory or quite advanced music theory, let me tell you, having done a university degree in music, some of the stuff on here is at or above the level of the theory we're taught at university. It's a great place to start and I'd say jump on there as soon as possible. Now it looks like I have a Q&A. The best sight singing app is literally called Sight Singing, Angelina. 
Um, if you jump on Android um, to Google Play, uh, or if you jump on the App Store and search sight singing, it's called sight singing. Wonderful. I'm going to jump back to my presentation in just a moment. There it is. You could also use other online resources. Attend webinars like this or go to some online classes, but also your chorus rehearsals, if you are in a chorus that are still happening on Zoom, are incredibly valuable. Obviously, we don't get the chance to sing with one another, but we do get the chance to sing with other people in the virtual room. A quick hint, there are actually so many amazing events happening at the moment and so many wonderful organisations putting on events like this for free that you can easily register for to keep yourself active any night of the week or day of the week. I say get on YouTube and see what amazing resources are on offer. The BHS, the Barbershop Harmony Society, for example, has released a plethora of invaluable videos that could help in keeping your singing fresh. They record their Harmony University sessions every year and plenty of those classes are available for free and there are plenty of opening session classes that are also available for free, which could be great warm-ups that you could use for yourself when you start each day. Finally, be sure to remember good alignment and posture at all times, not just when you're singing. But it's really important to remember that a lot of us are probably sitting down a lot more when we join our chorus rehearsals on Zoom. So it's important that you do maintain the fundamentals of good alignment even though when you're singing down. And that means feet flat on the floor, butt towards the front of the chair, lower back nice and tall, and the arc of your neck nice and tall as well. I'm just reminding myself to sit up straight while I'm sitting here right now. It's good to do this all the time. As someone who's had poor posture my whole life and has got an ongoing shoulder issue because of it, I need to check myself all the time. And the best way to do that is give yourself a shake and make sure you're in a good position. The next person I asked was Deke Sharon. Uh, we call him the grandfather or the father or the granddaddy of contemporary a cappella, working on music, movies like Pitch Perfect. His advice was, this is the best time to work on your instruments and craft. Maybe that might be your range, your tone, the styles you're singing, or sight singing. Use this time to improve so that when you're back together, everything is easier and therefore more fun. Now, I've already covered a lot of Dick's suggestions in the earlier part of this presentation. There are a couple more things I thought we might note. Sometimes you don't need to make any sound at all. Studies have proven that you don't necessarily need to have an instrument per se when you're practicing. Students have been capable of learning, say, the piano without having an actual piano in the room, but just replicating the movement in front of them. Similarly, we can practice singing without making a sound. We call this audiating when we sing along in our heads. And to some extent, it's just as valuable as singing out loud, especially in loud environments where we might, might not be aware of how loud we're singing. Now, loud environments for me, the worst one is when we're driving along in a car. And if we're singing along, sometimes we're belting it out without any awareness of how much we're having to sing above the sound of the moving car. So audiating could be a good opportunity for you when you're driving, but also if you're in a place where you can't make noise. I've learnt songs sitting at my desk at work, and the only way to do that is to do it in my head without annoying anyone else around me. It's very valuable. Always maintain vocal health. Now, there are plenty of things we can do to vocal health, and unfortunately, I think a lot of the habits that we're probably developing in isolation aren't necessarily very good for vocal health. But it's important to remember to drink plenty of water, get a good amount of sleep, reduce clearing your throat too aggressively, avoid vocal activities that might encourage poor choices, like watching the footy. However, we haven't even been able to do that. Finally, always make good choices. We're the best knowledge of our own voice, and we know our limits. So do be careful if you're playing Sing Star at home or playing along with karaoke online to respect your vocal folds. We've only got one set and it's important we look after them, especially in a time when we're maybe not using them as much in a good way as we have been in the past. I spoke to Mo Field, one of my close friends and an amazing educator and current director of the GNU in the US. She said to set a project to be accountable for, find a reason to continue to stay in shape Warming up for the sake of warming up will quickly get old. Make your project time bound and with a recording deadline. Always make sure to find a friend to hold you accountable. We are all masters at putting things off. Ain't that right? You'd think when we had more time, we'd get more things done, but I think it just gives us more time to procrastinate. Some tips from Mo. Challenge a friend, potentially, to post a song a day to one another. Record yourself and to send it to someone, even just to listen, or maybe even to harmonize with. Create a virtual quartet with singers you've never worked with using applications or web-based softwares that I've already mentioned, like Acapella. 
And remember to keep it a project-based event, like one song, one week, and record. Recently, I've been collaborating with a good friend of mine, Emily Moriarty, on recording some of our own arrangements. And it's been a great chance for me to review things that I have written, but also a great chance to do a bit of singing. There are plenty of people who are very hungry to do a bit of singing. So do find those singers on the internet through the various Facebook groups that exist to find people you might be able to make a virtual ensemble with. Mo suggests exploring other genres of singing. Try learning a piece in the classical repertoire, or maybe country and western. Even maybe something like a Celtic chant. There are so many other amazing genres of singing that we often don't launch into when we get trapped in our own bubble. And this is a great chance for you to explore a little bit more. And she says, as always, warm up daily. Even that's just, if that's bubbling in the shower. Make this the time each day, same time each day. So it becomes a habit and part of your routine, just like brushing your teeth or having a shower. I really hope that having a shower is part of your daily routine. The next person I asked was Captain Jack Sparrow, captain of the Black Pearl from Pirates of the Caribbean. His advice was, the problem is not the problem. The problem is your attitude about the problem. Now, this isn't meant to have any negative connotations, but I think that it's important that we do need to maintain some level of positivity in this really weird time of isolation. And a lot of the time, the reason that we might have ill feelings towards our situation is because we're thinking of that as the problem. So, try to look for positives when reflecting on the current situation, like what can I achieve? Hint, sometimes having a nap is an achievement. For me, Leaving my computer for more than five minutes is an achievement. Going for a walk, going and making a coffee, doing something to change up your day-to-day -day routine. Challenge yourself to be creative, but never beat yourself up if things don't work out as exactly as you have planned. Hint, we will only be as productive if our minds are ready to be so. Take time out of your day to breathe. And this is one that I personally have really been ensuring that I do. I live a very busy life that has me traveling every couple of weeks interstate and overseas and working almost every night of the week. I've never had this much time off from work. I've also, I think this is the longest since I've been on an airplane in 10 years. And it's been a really weird feeling, but a chance for me to sit back and take a moment to breathe. It may seem obvious, but slowing to breathe will help to slow your heart rate. There are some actually really cool videos on YouTube that might help you to relax that simply just offer you a countdown to breathe in and out. And if you're like me, who needs something to be occupying my brain space when I'm doing something like breathing, it's a really good opportunity to do so. But simply breathing in and out 10 seconds at a time, just for 30 seconds to a minute, can really change your outlook on many situations. I've just had a question from an attendee saying, do I have a preferred warm-up? Well, in my mind, a warm-up is made up of about five different components. And I have favorite warm-ups in each of those components. One that I've always come back to, which I learned from a choral director of mine um, back when I was a young lad, was an exercise that took us one through six on the scale, singing, uh, It's a really simple exercise. But interestingly enough, a lot of the music that we do during warm-ups sits between notes one and five, do and so. And we often don't get to note six of the scale degree, which is often one that's quite out of tune. It's a nice little scale with a little pause on the upper note, which is a great opportunity for us to look at a lot of different things in terms of our craft. I'd say that's one that I start with most of the time when I warm up personally and when I warm up choirs that I'm conducting. The next person I asked was the wonderful Tim Warwick, international gold medalist with the incredible, oh my gosh, I just had a complete mental blank about the name of the quartet. <laughs> That's very embarrassing, and everyone who's currently watching this call will realise that I've completely forgotten the name of their quartet. You've forgotten a long the name. Day. Alex, you've forgotten the name Vocal Spectrum. That is so embarrassing. Yeah. Uh, that's sort of brain <laughs> fart, folks. You can forgive yourself. <laughs> Mate, the good news is we're only recording this onto Facebook Live, so um, we'll send Tim a link later. Please do. The last conversation I had with Tim was planning a holiday to Hawaii when we had the chance but I don't think he will be wanting to do that after I forgot the name of this quartet. Uh, Tim's a bit of a genius, both in the, both in the business world, um, in the singing world, but also in the learning track world. He's made one of the largest collections of learning tracks that exist at timtracks.com. Um, and it is a hugely important resource for so many choruses, choirs, and ensembles around the world. 
No doubt here, Tim has gone for a, a learning track option, which is where his brain exists a lot of the time. He says, take advantage of part missing learning tracks. Try to record yourself with a learning track to continue to work on your voice, your tuning, and most importantly, to keep your voice in good shape. Now, most of our good sets of learning tracks will come with a part missing or left right balance track. Now, the left right balance track usually will mean that in one ear, you'll have all three parts that aren't yours, and in the other ear, the part that you sing. These tracks are really great when you're rehearsing with headphones, because if you do want to sing along with just your part, you could take out one earphone. But if you do want to challenge yourself, like Tim has said, take out the other earphone so you can sing along with the remaining part. It's a really handy resource. Now, if you don't have a set of tracks that you can do this with, then you might want to make some of your own. It could be a good chance for you to maybe learn another part in the song, or maybe collaborate with a friend to make a set of multi-tracks that you can use to rehearse at home. A very wise coach once said to me that as a non-lead, how can I harmonize to a melody I don't know? So it's always my goal when I learn a new song as a tenor that I learn the lead to the melody part so I know what's going on around me. So this could be a great chance for you to learn a little bit more about the songs you're singing in terms of what the other parts are singing. Um, and then the final thing is to record yourself along with these tracks. As Dan said, recording is one of the best things that we can do um, to help develop our skills. So record yourself along with a part missing track and that gives you a four part recording. So you can either listen to or assess or send to someone else to have a listen to for you. I next asked Luke Stevenson. He's our current BHA gold medalist lead and a self-confessed acapella diehard. I've had the chance to sing in quartets with Luke and collaborate with Luke over the years and he is a pleasure to work with and a really incredible voice but also a wealth of knowledge having worked in many different genres in the choral world. His advice was always be performing internally. Even if you're working through technical details, maintain a connection with your performing self. Try to hear all the other parts in your head, just like you do when you sing along with your favorite quartet or chorus or ensemble, or when you're singing at rehearsal. So I thought, take a moment before running any of your songs, whether it be something you sing in an ensemble or it's just your favorite song that you've heard on the radio, just consider the following things. What might have inspired the first line of a song? It's always interesting to think. I like to think about songs being the result of a conversation. So what might have just been said before the first line of a song was sung? What's the narrative behind the song or the story behind the song? Where did the song come from? What inspired the song to be written? And who was it about? Learn whether or think about whether you're singing to someone or to something and how that might affect your performance on an emotional but also a physical level as well. Finally, what is the airspeed of the velocity of an unladen swallow? I'm hoping that everyone at home is laughing right now because I can't hear you, but I thought that was a funny joke that I managed to say incorrectly in the heat of the moment. Dan, I saw you laughing, so I've got one person going, that's fine. Wonderful work. Um, African or European swallow is, is the correct answer. <laughs> Very good, thank you, Rob. <laughs> Another thing you might wanna do is practice in front of a mirror. Now, although uh, you're gonna be thinking about things when you're singing, it's really interesting to see yourself perform when you can see yourself live. You may also wanna record a video of yourself singing so that you get a bit more of an idea after the fact, what you look like and how you're emoting when you sing your song. Finally, audiating while singing as an incredibly valuable skill. Now, audiating we can obviously do when we're not singing, but it's also a skill that you can develop to be able to do while you are singing. Audiating in your head while you're singing could be as simple as making sure you can hear the pitch whenever you go to sing a note, being so attached to our do or our home base as we're singing a song. I spoke to Donnie Rose, who's an incredible choral director and currently director of music education at the Barbershop Harmony Society, putting together an incredible harmony university every year. Now his advice was a bit more targeted towards choral directors and chorus rehearsals. He said to change your rehearsal from two or three hours to a maximum of 90 minutes while in isolation. Then change strategies every 10 or 15 minutes to have different people in front of the camera as much as possible. Learner fatigue is heightened in virtual settings. 
it's important to keep changing activities and strategies, especially during a chorus rehearsal. Now, I've had the opportunity to work with a lot of directors over the last few weeks in talking about what's working for them in their chorus rehearsals and what they might need help with. Below is a bit of a crash course list of what most directors have said is helping them in their rehearsals via Zoom or via Facebook Live. Obviously, reduce the rehearsal length to 90 minutes and be sure to always schedule activities for 10 to 15 minutes. Try and engage multiple presenters. Have different people say do a physical warm up or a vocal warm up, or different people lead certain parts of the rehearsals. Maybe invite a guest educator. I myself got to coach a chorus in the US the other day, a chorus in Wisconsin that I had the pleasure of working with one of their quartets at Harmony U one year. And it was great to be able to connect with those guys, even though uh, we were many, many hours apart. There are so many educators around the globe that are more than happy to give just half an hour of their time to visit your rehearsal, to share a little bit of their knowledge and experience with you and your singers. Now they can either do this live, if the timing doesn't work out so great, or there are plenty of pre-recorded resources that so many educators have put up for free online that you might want to use during your rehearsals. In short, there's a variety of activities, whether it be singing along with a learning track, whether it be going to a sectional rehearsal, whether it be just having a chat, whether it be looking at an international performance and seeing what you liked about it, whether it be maybe looking at a presentation. Take the opportunity to teach rather than just sing. It's a bit hard at the moment for us to be working on ensemble skills. In fact, it's kind of impossible. So this is a great opportunity to teach and learn skills rather than just sing. Utilize small group discussions and sectional rehearsals. Now, if you're using Zoom, the breakout rooms feature is amazing. I can't recommend it enough. It's been a real asset to my chorus rehearsals when we're learning new songs for the sections to be able to go away and work together for five to 10 minutes at a time. If you're not using Zoom, there are plenty of other outlets that you can use for your sections to get together to rehearse and have a chat. Avail yourself of the extensive resources online of which I've already mentioned quite a few. Focus on individual skill building because obviously a lot of us are sitting at home by ourselves rather than in a room filled with other singers. So what can we give to our singers that's gonna bring individual skills to a new level? Finally, stay connected to all of your people. I think the biggest thing that's weighing on most of us now is that lack of human interaction with other people. So do what we can to stay in touch with each other, whether it be a phone call, a simple message or a silly meme you might send someone, an email, a virtual coffee date online, something to let people know that you're thinking about them and that they're on your mind. The next person I asked uh, is Yoda. And Yoda said to me, Always pass on what you have learned. Now, there were so many great Yoda quotes, but I thought this one was a nice way to draw our discussion to a bit of a close. Because so much of us uh, are learning amazing things about what works. And the only way I was able to put this presentation together today was by talking to other people about what has worked for them and what they've learned from running their rehearsals online or being singing educators in the time of isolation. Have you heard something cool? Tell your friends, the more the merrier. Have you learned a new skill? Tell your friends. We learn so much from teaching, not just from learning, but from teaching, that talking about the things that we're learning and experiencing at home are just as valuable as learning ourselves. Now, the final person that I spoke to is an incredibly close friend of mine and one of the best chorus directors and music educators that we have around. But before I talk about the illustrious Joe Cerruti, I do have another question. Yes, Rob, I agree. A chorus newsletter is a great way to keep in touch with singers or building a Facebook group, for example. Now, Joe is currently the director of Outreach at BHS and also the director of the Alexandra Harmonizers, an incredible chorus based just out of Washington, DC. Now, Joe sent me an incredibly lengthy document that was filled with so much love and joy towards his ensemble, the Alexandra Harmonizers, in terms of how they're coping with this time of isolation. It was a true pleasure to read the other day and I couldn't thank him enough for sharing that with me and sharing their journey. But I asked him to kind of surmise all of that um, as succinctly as possible while capturing all the detail. And this is what he said. Fortunately, many are finding the comfort of singing during these times. Many others are finding the confidence and vulnerability required to sing without the support of others to be highly difficult, frustrating and unfulfilling. Me personally, I've always sung in ensembles, so it's been really weird getting used to the sound of my own voice when I'm singing along at home. Regardless of what music, what kind of music we are or aren't able to make during these crazy times, the most important thing singers can do right now is simply to keep showing up for each other, 
providing that essential social connection and support for whoever happens to need it at any given time. Our job is to inspire folks to keep showing up for each other. So what does that mean? Well, we all joined a singing group, uh, but when we joined, we also joined to become a part of a community. And it's important that we try and keep that community connected as much as possible while we're in isolation. And never underestimate the power of simply being there for one another. As I said, jumping on a call, sending someone a message, being there at rehearsal, being there for a presentation like this means the world, even just to one person, you've affected in a positive way. Finally, stay connected and stay in touch. I really love this period of isolation because I've stayed in touch with people that I've really fallen out of touch with. And I think I've solidified some new friends with people that I worried weren't in my life anymore. So doing everything we can to stay connected and stay in touch is really important. We're at the end, so I'll give you a very quick summary of the key points that I took from all these wonderful educators that I'd like to thank right now for sharing their time and knowledge. Firstly, you can, you can have it all, just not all at once. Thanks, Oprah. Sing every day. Thank you, Beck. Sing for the pleasure of it. Thanks, Naomi. Record yourself. Thank you, El Presidente. Hum like crazy. Thank you, Jackie. Use technology. Thank you, very, very handsome, Alex Morris. Work on your instrument and your craft. Thanks, Seek. Create achievable projects. Thanks, Mo. Flip your attitude. Thank you, Captain Jack Sparrow. Use part missing learning tracks. Thanks, Tim Warwick. Always perform internally. Thanks, Luke. Always pass on what you have learned. Thank you, Master Yoda. And finally, thank you to Joe for reminding us to show up for each other whenever we can. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Alex. Uh, and so attendees, now is your opportunity to, um, to pick Alex's brain as much as possible while we've got the pleasure of having him on board. So just jump down to the Q&A uh, function on the bottom of your screen there and send through uh, any questions that you'd like to have answered. I'm just getting lots of thanks. That's very nice. I'll That's answer the question nice. with thank you too. <laughs> very lovely. Alex, I might ask a question then just to keep things spinning along a little bit. So, as a brand new barbershopper, what was the one thing in your rehearsal program or the one thing that you learned to do at home that made the biggest difference to your personal development? I think um, recording myself and getting used to hearing that sound um, was A, the hardest thing, but also B, the most rewarding thing. I think as a singer, I have often um, disliked the sound of my own voice. And I think many singers will probably attest to that. I especially don't like the sound of my spoken voice. So when I listen back to this class, I'm probably gonna need a wine in hand. Um, but I think, you know, learning to accept um, that a recording maybe isn't exactly what your voice sounds like, but also the wonders that you can learn from hearing yourself back um, was so important for me at the very beginning. And even still now when I'm um, many, many, many years along my journey. <laughs> I think it's a, it's a human trait that we're all very reluctant to listen to our own voices. And, uh, you know, I sang for a very long time before we recorded our first CD and it took me, you know, a good 20 years to think, uh, actually, this CD, this CD is not too bad. You know, uh, it's a passable job, but I'm still, you know, I still listen to it and think, you know, there are imperfections and there are things that I would like to change. And so, uh, you know, I, I do encourage people to, to keep trying that, you know, keep, keep recording, keep listening and think to yourself, you know, would I buy this CD and listen to it over and over my car? And get yourself, get your own voice to the stage where you're happy with what you're doing. And uh, I think that will make a great difference. So we've got a question in from Rob Lee, Alex, um, asking, are you wearing pants? My answer to that question is, you will never know. <laughs> you know the, wonders, the wonders of Zoom. Thank you very much. And lots of thanks to, to uh, uh, coming in. Thanks, for Trevor. Me. Thank you, Deb. Great. So as, as we mentioned at the beginning of this session, this is part of BHA's ongoing um, Friday night BHA live series. Um, they'll be going on for the indefinite future uh, that, that uh, you know, we've got some really fun ideas coming up and some fun presenters and some really fun topics coming up. And uh, we're pretty excited to be to be presenting this to you. So uh, Alex, do you have any, uh, any, any other final words of wisdom before we wrap things up? 
Um, one thing I will say is I'm more than happy to chat to anyone about anything. So you can grab me on email or on Facebook. Um, at the moment, I'm learning so much from just having conversations with people around what's working for them and what isn't working for them. Um, and I'm more than happy to share my learnings um, and anything I might be able to offer. But also, if I have the time, I would love to sit down and have a Zoom coffee date with you and just have a bit of a yarn. I must admit, next week I'm moving house, but after that, I'm all yours. <laughs> it's been a real pleasure putting this together and such a great chance for me to be able to talk to so many of my colleagues about what's working for them. Um, but I, I really do want to hit home what Joe said about staying connected. Um, it's the number one thing we can doing, be doing for each other at the moment is just staying in touch. Um, and, and these sessions are, are a great way for us to be doing that. So thank you to BHA for offering this to our members and also to the wider community. Fantastic, Alex. Thank you. And like you say, being connected is so important and, and it's just you know heartwarming to, to see um, 60 of us sitting around on a Friday night uh, all over the country um, and just talking about the thing that we love the best and that, that is barbershop and singing together. What a shame we can't do it uh, together uh, right at the moment, but we're getting there. So uh, stay tuned. We look very much forward to bringing you more BHA live sessions every Friday night, 7.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, uh, advertised through Facebook, and we will see you next week.